how do you know where to start? <laughs> I just like the frankness of that question. I feel like there are so many options and it's hard to know what to consider. Size, weight, flex, non-flex. It's daunting and hard to know what you're really getting without being able to test drive the pens. I do agree. It is hard. You know, I empathize with that, especially because, you know, most people don't really think that intently about their writing instruments. But then when they kind of get into fountain pens, there's so much to kind of get into and explore and discover that all of a sudden you think about how much a pen weighs, whereas you probably never thought about it or cared about it before in your life. I know I if sometimes use pens or maybe like a fleeting moment, I'm like, oh, this pen is too thin or this pen, you know, feels weird in my hand, but I never ever thought to measure how much a pen weighs when I was writing with it until I got into fountain pens or to think about the diameter of the grip of the pen or just, you know, things like that. Like once you get into it, you really start to care about all these little details that just were never that important to me before. So um, that is that is definitely one consideration. You know, all these different things that you're talking about, it can definitely be daunting because you're thinking about things that you've never really had to think about before. Um, so I'll go ahead and start out just by saying that we put a video together called Top 5 Fountain Pens for Newbies. I still think that video holds up even five years later or however old it is now. It's pretty old, but uh, still a super helpful video. It's, I think, our number two or number three video of all time. Very helpful, and I do stand behind those pens. I think it's great. Looking at the Pilot Metropolitan, the Lamy Safari, Preppy Varsity, Jin Hao, I think they're all still really solid pens that you should consider. I don't think you need to spend a ton. You know, I think you need to invest a little bit, especially because you're getting into a new hobby that's tool-based, so you have ink, maybe paper if you want to get into that, though you can skip getting into crazy paper if you want to at first. Um, the pen, ink, I think you'd be set. So I think if you set a budget, a reasonable budget for yourself, maybe $50, you know, which is, a, it's an investment, but it's not, you know, all in. Like you can give up getting, you know, a fancy coffee a few times uh, and and save up 50 bucks pretty quickly if that's what you need to do. Um, and, uh, and so I'll try and point you in the right direction a little bit. Spending, you know, you can get something like a Pilot Metropolitan or a Twisby Eco or, um, you know, a Varsity. Like really you can try out just for a few bucks, but um, starting, you know, kind of like walking or sorry, Crawl, walk, run is kind of like the, the phrase that we like to throw around here a little bit at Goulet. It's like you don't need to go and get a Visconti Homo sapiens as your first pen just because you've heard that it's nice and people like it. You can start easy and then as you get deeper and deeper into it, then you can consider going more and more nuts and getting into involved in things that way. Um, I would not get into flex. If you are just starting out, don't do it. Not because you can't and not because I don't think you would enjoy it. It's just you're throwing yourself so much in the deep end and so many different variables that if things don't work out perfectly, you're not really going to understand why and you're going to increase your chances of frustration right off the bat. Now you can enjoy flex, but it's kind of like, you know, oh, I think I would like to learn a little bit more about music. Let me learn concert piano or let me get thrown on a banjo and try and play bluegrass right away. Like you're not technically there yet, you know? It's a more complicated instrument to play. So maybe start out with, you know, I'm trying to think of an equivalent. I went down a bad road with the whole musical instrument thing. You know, maybe start out with guitar or something where it's like you can just learn, you know, chords or you can read tabs and you don't have to understand all of music theory in order to be able to play the instrument, right? I guess that's kind of a, that kind of works. Sure, why not? So that's kind of where I like to go with it. Start start easy. Start with kind of more foolproof pens like the ones I had in the five pens for newbies video. Um, weight is good. Uh, the reason I like using weight is because um, it's something that you can measure with what you have right now. You can have pens that you have and you're like, this weight feels really good to me. And you can actually weigh it. I mean, assuming you have a scale where you can get some precision. If you have like a food scale in your kitchen and you change it to grams, that can be super helpful. Sometimes you can do ounces too. It's a little less precise. Um, but you can do grams and you can see. And we have weight measurements of all of our pens on our site. So you can get some idea there. That's kind of why I like that one. Size is a little tougher. If you have a pen that we also carry, you can compare it in our pen plaza. That's where that can be handy. But if you're just getting into pens, you have no fountain pens, we may not have the pen that you have as a comparison one in our Nibnook. So that might not, or in the Pen Plaza. So that might not be as helpful. Um, 
but I mean, you can you can measure it. Measuring your own pens is kind of tough unless you have calipers. Uh, you can kind of do it with a ruler, but you're talking about some precision here. You're talking like maybe between like nine and 14 millimeters in diameter. And then the length is, you know, usually between five and six inches, somewhere around there. It gets tough. They get into such fine measurements on some of these pens that it can be hard to really measure out and know kind of what it is that you're working out working with, I think it's better to just get a couple of inexpensive ones and know and find out what you like, and then you can kind of work from there. Um, if you, and then kind of the last thing here, if you are just getting into pens and you don't really know what you like, ask around for any people that you work with or go to school with or that are in your church or your family or your group of friends, see if anybody is kind of into fountain pens. Um, pro just because Fountain pens are such a kind of an obscure but kind of interesting thing. And there's so much of like an evangelization kind of culture for people that get really into fountain pens that pretty much if you have somebody in your world that's into fountain pens, they're gonna be so stoked to just tell you about their pens and try and get you into their world that they're gonna be more than happy to let you try all the pens they have and show you what they have and play around with them and, and all that, that you may have uh, somebody who works in your office that you sort of know, but maybe not really, but then as you have pens more on your radar, you see them in a meeting and you're like, oh, that is a fountain pen. Let me go ask them and you can say, hey, I saw you using a fountain pen. Are you into those? Because they seem kind of interesting to me. And they could be like, oh yeah, I have like 20 pens. Do you want to come by and check them out? Boom, you just have access to 20 pens that you did not have to buy. You can hold them all, you can get a sense for it. They probably, you know, would be interested to talk to you more about it and maybe could give you some pointers and maybe help you to kind of speed up that learning curve a little bit and then you can get more enjoyment out of them. I think that could be really helpful to you. And then lastly, of course, you can watch Fountain Pen 101, you can watch these videos here. Chances are, if you're sitting here 32 minutes into a Goulet Q&A video, you're probably already pretty deep in this anyway, but maybe you're in like super hardcore research mode and you just find me delightful and entertaining. <laughs> and maybe you just watch this for fun and you're not actually into fountain pens. Though I have a hard time believing that. We're pretty deep into it here, so um, maybe that's the case. Maybe if you, have, if you don't own a single fountain pen, go ahead and leave a comment on YouTube. If you are, don't own a single fountain pen, I would love to know that that's the case and this is not like your first video. You like have kind of been into this for a while, but you're just like lurking and waiting and gaining research. That would be interesting for me to know. So leave a comment on YouTube. I'd love to engage with you a little bit.